Welcome to physics club. Okay, it's recording. Is it a screw? Does it feel like it's stuck? Uh, oh, we need to take the tape off. Yeah. <laughs> Is this recording? For sure. Yeah, it's flashing orange. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna tape the sides here a little bit. Hey guys, I need to speak a little bit. Well, would you guys like to see what the physics club is doing right now? Follow me. Alright, so this is uh, the physics club. What's and good? We're, and we're working on our high altitude balloon. <laughs> it's crunch time. So this is our head of electronics. I'm a hard at work right now. We have our two club leaders. Mr. Joseph and Mrs. Buffy and Will Self over there. We are working on reducing the mass of our payload. I see this is our payload that we're about to send in. What am I doing? I am trying to get a screw off. That doesn't work. <laughs> and because it's a star and who invents a star screw? We're working on the Raspberry Pi. What, what it, exactly? Uh, the gyroscope. Yeah. And what is a gyroscope? Oh, Just to, to know what direction like, we're going. Yeah, if it's going up, down, so or yeah. sideways. Yeah. Have you been turning it right the whole way? <laughs> You've been turning it right the whole way? <laughs> She's been tightening it the whole time. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my. So we're part of the electronics team, and we're programming the Raspberry Pi um, in order for it to connect to the sensors. Uh, sen the sensors being the Term, uh, thermometer, the barometer, no, uh, what else is there? The Geiger counter? I'm uh, sorry? And the gyroscope. What is the things that we're measuring? Like, what does that... So numbers? Numbers, specifically. Uh, numbers of... Uh, things. things. So barometer, it records the pressure. The thermometer being, it records the temperature. And the Geiger counter helps us determine the radiation that occurs up uh, in the shadow sphere, or atmosphere, I should say. Well, Got any more questions? Very interesting what he's talking about. I'm having fun. So what I want to do, I want to write this, so I want to go data. 
I don't know how I would want it. I'm just going to be crying. Cool to the... Oh, hi there. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> What's the, what's the question? All right, what did you guys do to prepare? Uh, we spent lots of time after school. We made prototypes. So <laughs> originally, we had a cardboard like model of this. We made two models. This was the first, and it was just going to be a tetrahedron. It was a lot of that one. It just it looked cooler, and we also thought that it's um, there was more space on the bottom to put our electrical and science devices. There's more opportunities for like camera positioning. To yeah, something. definitely. We were extremely overweight because we had put <laughs> tape over top of it. We coated the entire thing yeah. in a lot of duct tape. Yeah. So then we had to take a lot of that off and then also... Yeah, you, you can uh, like kind of see... Like the bottom we stripped off the majority. Initially the tape was yellow but we just took it all off and put mm -hmm. painted it yellow. And we did shave a little bit of the foam down and there was some of the stuff the electronics team wanted to put in that we were like, no, too heavy. Make it smaller or it doesn't go in. And then they did, so it all worked out. Like we freehand cut everything here. Yeah, just using exacto knives. I think a steak knife and at a one pro point. And a protractor. A protractor, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty proud of the angles we got. How long do you think you guys spent in total working on the the payload? How much like hours? We probably spent about twelve. Cutting just it cutting it, and then, and then plus all the taping and everything we did here. So yeah. at least twenty hours total. Yeah, plus all the driving and stuff that adds a couple hours easy. And just waiting in the classroom for like the electronics team and the science team to get everything together to, so that we could put it in the actual payload. But that took three or four hours too. And we tried to build the hot wire cutter. Yeah, yeah. if you include us trying to build things that didn't work. That was about four. That was, <laughs> yeah, four, four, four and a half hours. Yeah. yeah, some things exploded. Yeah. Uh, some people were almost set on fire, <laughs> mainly me. Oh, hey, I was a part of the electronics team. Uh, we did the programming and soldering for the board and for the electronics on the balloon. What did you sort of do to prepare? Well, we used Python to code everything. It took a long time to get the Raspberry Pi up and working. We don't know why, just because it's uh, open software and it sucks. And it just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It takes a while to set up. Um, our team had to fix a problem with our Geiger counter, do some soldering last minute. We ordered it from some website that was sketchy in Russian. Well, I don't think it was sketchy, but like, you know, Russian. We started figuring out what did we want to do, what type of experiments. We had to talk to the science team about what they wanted to do. We had to buy some wires, a Raspberry Pi, some memory, whatever. So once all that came in, it was about now, say, a month to three weeks before the launch. That's when we started actually getting everything together, we started the programming. It, about the last week is when crunch time hit, and we basically had, I'd say, 10% of everything done. So every day after school, there for five, six hours working on it, programming, putting, making sure everything runs properly. Action. It is 6.53, 54 in the morning. Uh, we're about to head up to uh, Alonso, Manitoba to go launch our high altitude balloon. Pretty psyched, full send. All very awake. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> she packed my bags last night, free flight. We drove 150 kilometers north. To, a, to an elementary school where we started to set up our high altitude balloon. And I'm gonna be high as a kite by then. Setting up our high altitude balloon, and as, as you can see, is currently 10, 18. Getting our payload ready, getting our sights ready to launch. Pretty psyched. Big launch. Oh! Whoa! 
good. That's good, that's good. No, no. Anybody who's going near the balloon, like we already said, you're gonna have gloves so you don't even get the oil of your skin on the balloon and anything metal, if you have buttons or zippers, anything has to be taped. Wait, put them in right now before we tape them down. You <laughs> How big is it gonna get? Probably like a lot bigger. <laughs> don't touch your face, don't touch any skin. If you need a nose scratch, we got scratchers. Yeah. Designated nose scratcher. She's my nose scratcher and the sleeve roller after. Where is it? It's like right close to my eye. Our nose scratcher. Who's holding? I've never done some you guys. Oils from your hands, you don't want that on the balloon. It is gonna be a balloon full of helium that wants to fly away, so we're gonna have to keep that on the ground and then we tie it off. Um, like if you had a, like an open or like container of helium, the helium actually wouldn't go down because it's so much lighter than so much lighter than, uh, than air. Yeah. yeah, right, so we don't actually have to worry about the helium shooting out of the balloon once we take it off, it's just keeping the balloon so from flying. It's the balloon away. shooting off from us. Exactly. Uh, we're setting up a bunch of cameras as well just to see what we see, what it looks like up there. We hopefully see the curvature of the earth, but I'm not 100% sold that we're gonna see it. I don't think we're going high enough. Uh, but we're also gonna just see what the atmosphere looks like as we go up. So our payload is built. It was complete a couple, a few weeks ago. Uh, we've just been putting the finishing touches on. We're filling up this balloon with helium. We're gonna anchor it down and then we're going to, uh, Test to see how much this balloon actually lifts up before we actually launch. We're about an hour out from launch time and we're looking pretty good so far. Yeah, okay, so we had two cameras on the payload. We had one at the top, which was meant to film the balloon and watch it get bigger. Our second camera was on the side and it was supposed to film the Earth as we go up. We're out here putting up the anchor for our high altitude balloon. As you can see, Kyle has the tape measure and mark. Over to your right is walking all the way for 30 meters so we know where to set up our anchor. Why do we need an anchor? So we can hold the balloon down. So we have one to support holding the balloon down while we have another person holding it from the other side. So then we could attach our pillow to our high altitude balloon. Uh, today is uh, Manitoba Association of Physics Teachers annual high altitude balloon flight day. And so we've got 13 schools from uh, Winnipeg and Lundar, Manitoba, uh, launching weather balloons with student designed uh, payloads uh, full of scientific instruments, and radios, and cameras that will be traveling into the stratosphere. So we filled our balloon. Okay. And now we're just kind of waiting for the tech team to finish putting everything into the payload. Then we're gonna hook that up and take a picture or something, and then we're done. <laughs> we're sitting in the back of Mr. Neil's truck. So we're just trying to fix up the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna be charging everything up. Uh, we're, had, we're plugged into a monitor, making sure everything runs, making sure all the batteries were good. Uh, and then we, there was some last minute code I had to do in the back of the truck at the site. Uh, but we just, after that, we taped everything onto the payload. Just turned everything on, made sure all the lights were running, everything was good. We're putting all the electronics into the payload and launch us soon. Yeah. And everybody's excited. Everything's good. Oh wait, yeah. we moved the, uh, the, the put this right here. So it's gonna be a little tight. Yeah, everything's good. Take yeah, a last look. Okay. Lights are on. Yeah. This is going through the middle. Yo, Do we want to tape any of this down? <laughs> is this going to pull on the camera? No, be. I think that would be fine. Do you guys think this is all good? Uh, before we go, let's make sure we check the cameras and make sure they're not dirty. So you're... The bottom. We'll yeah, the bottom, the bottom will have to do that. Closed. Radio's yeah, on. Cool. Do you want to use a carabiner on this? No. Okay. Uh, no. Just in case. It hasn't been done before. Let's not... Do we have our passports? Yeah, we nope. can't cross the border. Is it recording? Joseph! Yeah, it's All right, recording. watch your hair, Miss Murphy. Sorry. And then this is... Oh, yeah, that was the end of the Sure. God. <laughs> we can't take you across the border anyway. Uh, no, don't... Uh, no. Camera's there. Camera's there. Be careful. Yeah. Yeah, we're good? Yeah, okay. this will go. I hope that's in... Like, nothing's covering that camera, like, this stuff. It should be good, eh? No, it'll be all right.
<laughs> Someone just double check this knot. I'm not the most confident man. <laughs> not the most confident. <laughs> I think that was good. Let's do a couple more just for fun. Yeah. This, this seems, yeah. Yeah, it seems good. good. Okay. Quadrupling was a good idea. I felt good. We're about 15, 30 grams over. We turned it off because we needed to be learning the script. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can so, this, huh? this, you this the guy you're we're, this is good. we're confident yeah. with yep. this. Do we want to wipe down, oh, wipe down. the other two lenses? Okay. Do we want to put a little piece of tape on the outside of the camera just in case? No. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. This is one ready to launch. Wait, are we sure? Are we sure? Let's go. Do we have Lock to? Oh my gosh. Oh my god. And put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Commencing countdown engines on. Detach from station and may God's love be with you. Three, two, one, book! This is Over. ground control to Major Tom. You've really made the gravy. And the papers want to know whose shirts you wear. All right, so here is the map of all of the um, ab balloons. We're going at 22 miles per kilometers an hour at 20,000 meters. 129 degrees right now. footage there's a whole bunch of beeping sound especially at the high altitudes there's a lot which is very hard to count those beeps are when alpha particles pass through the Geiger counter so it counts how many so it chirps every time an alpha particle passes by and before too long I know it's time to go the pressure decreases exponentially as we go to higher altitudes. And at our maximum altitude, there is almost, wait, I think there's zero pressure. Yeah, there's almost zero pressure at the highest and altitude. Is it kilopascals? Yeah. Oh, and that's when the balloon pops? Yes, okay. Right, and I guess that makes sense because the atmosphere is less dense, the pressure goes down. The balloon is still rising right now. It's at 24,000 meters, and uh, it, we predicted that it would land around Carmen, but it's still rising, and um, it's supposed to make it to 30,000. All right, little update. We are now actually we did a little loop, and we're going northeast now. We're still going up. We're at 27,000 meters. Yeah, we're not gonna cross the border. 
Here we go. This is good because some of those schools have already crossed the U.S. border. Have they? Yep. Well, the temperature goes down until about like 15 kilometers and then it starts going up again. Why? But then it gets, it goes down and then back up, right? Yeah, yeah so it goes down, stops, and then goes back up because that's where the uh, ozone layer is. So the ultraviolet radiation being trapped by the ozone layer heats it up, in which case the temperature increases. As it goes higher and higher, the atmospheric pressure becomes less and less. So the helium inside the balloon pushes harder and harder on the outside until you get to a certain point, about 30 kilometers up, where the balloon pops. There's a star waiting in the sky. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds. There's a Oh, we're descending. No, what? Yep, 20, 23,000. What? That yeah. was fast. Holy crap. Ooh, we popped. Burst. We burst. Did? Yeah, we burst. Yay. Yep, at, at 30,000. Crazy. Yeah, okay. Wow. Call, uh, call Mr. Joseph. Call Mr. Joseph. Call him. We're burst! Woo! Woo! Look out your window, I can see his light. If we can sparkle, he may land tonight. Don't tell your papa, or he'll get us locked up and fight. There's a star. Looks like it's probably landed already and um in a field? Yeah, looks like it worked. It's actually right near a road. Nice. So um we're, let's go try and retrieve it. to the actual launch, what were the things that you guys were most worried about? It falling apart and breaking as it landed, I think. I, I was worried about it breaking, yeah. I thought, um, 
I was kind of iffy about these. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're just they don't look strong. And, and that was thin. a two day before change as well. Yeah, we changed that right it was before. Very last minute. Yeah. yeah. Because originally we had this. I was worried that it wouldn't run for more than an hour because our batteries were last minute and very small. Uh, it did die early, but only half an hour before touchdown, so it's not too bad. It ran, I think our flight time was about four hours, and then, so it ran about three and a half hours. Alright, so this is where the GPS brought us. <laughs> Right now, we are at some farmer's field looking to see if our uh, hab is anywhere in sight. Right now, if you can zoom into Mr. Joseph, uh, trying to have a uh, talk with the family. And we're going to get things. Yeah. <laughs> so we're looking for the uh, Pixis 1. So far we can't find it. Oh, we're going to touch down. We're looking all around this farm field area. Nothing so far. No green. A diamond of some sort and it's starting to stress us out because we do not know where it would be um, for the most part we think that the wind blew it in a different direction than what we suspected it to be I was walking through a field I had just <laughs> cleared a windbreak of trees <laughs> and I had emerged on the other side of the field. breeze from the southeast <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> and I had just entered into this other field and from across the road I could see this little like abnormal shape in the field <laughs> that wasn't dirt and then I yelled to Nick is that it and he ran and got it <coughs> I touched it first and everything was intact yeah yeah the cameras were still running and the yeah. Geiger counter was still beeping too from a camera perspective I found it first <laughs> but we all know it was me he did point it out I think Nick saw it. No, Eli saw it. Oh, he said, What's that? I said, Sorry, running to it. Can anyone call? Woo! Woo! We got it! Come this way! Yay! Woo! Good thing it didn't go in there. We captured it. No way! It's like a yo yo. I remember that. <laughs> going down south on that road, that's where we are. We're just going, uh, on the I think it's the same one. Hey, Mr. 
master's basement Won't you please take me along I won't do anything wrong Hey, Mr. Spaceman Won't you please take me along For a ride Please take me along I won't do anything wrong Hey, Mr. Spaceman Won't you please take me along For a ride 